thank everyone for coming out uh, this this morning. We are joined today uh, by our city state's attorney, Marilyn Mosby, our council president, Nick Mosby, the chair of the council's uh, public safety committee, uh, Mark Conway, Deputy Police Commissioner uh, Michael Sullivan. Uh, we also have Deputy Health Director uh, uh, Beth Holler, Mary Beth Holler. Uh, we also have Director of the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Safety Engagement, uh, Shante Jackson. Our Deputy Mayor for Public Safety, Sonny Snitzer. We are also joined by Lieutenant Colonel uh, Jack Herzog, uh, Major Sneed, and Major Holman as well. Uh, thank you all for coming out. Uh, as you have already heard, uh, the Baltimore Police Department made an arrest early this morning in the murder of Dante Barksdale, a beloved leader of our Safe Streets Anti-Violence Program, a son of Baltimore, and to me, most importantly, my friend and brother. I cannot thank uh, the brave women and men of BPD enough for their diligent work in apprehending a suspect. I want to thank them uh, directly for their work, in particular, uh, the work of the great homicide detectives that worked on this case and uh, the folks in the Warrant Apprehension Task Force. I pray uh, and know that your efforts will bring some comfort and peace to the Barksdale family and everyone who knew and loved Dante Barksdale the way that he knew and loved all of us here in Baltimore. Uh, this is very personal for me. As you know, Dante was my friend, and like all of us, he was far from perfect. But he was called for a perfect mission for his life. And that was, uh, his mission was to eradicate the harsh legacy of violence that has plagued our city for generations. Like us all, Dante made mistakes. But ultimately, uh, he turned his life around. And as an outreach coordinator for Safe Streets, he was persistently in our toughest communities to engage young people and impart healthy approaches to solving conflict. That's what he did each and every day of his life. He went to the places where most people won't go. He talked to the people that most people are afraid to talk to. He did the things that most people only will say with their fingers on the internet. That's who Dante was. He believed that everyone had value and a purpose. Uh, yet, uh, uh, this brother became a victim of the very gun violence that he was determined to prevent and that he did prevent uh, thousands of times. We're standing in front of the health department because this is where Safe Streets was originally housed. And I've stated time and time again uh, that public safety is a public health issue. To effectively cure violence, we must address uh, the root causes of it and widespread gun violence that has afflicted, afflicted Baltimore uh, for far too long. And let me be clear, the responsibility of tackling violent crime does not and cannot rely solely on the shoulders of the BPD. Everyone standing here has a role to play in moving Baltimore forward. Every city agency will and must be concentrated on it, committing to doing uh, what Dante has left for us to do, finishing his work. We must stay the course. If he, if Dante can muster the courage to look beyond his current circumstance and reimagine his life, then we have a moral obligation to reimagine what public safety looks like here in our city. Dante heeded the call of redemption and peace. And as he said, forgiveness was the realest thing that he ever learned of. It is past time. It is past time for Baltimore, uh, the community, leaders, government, everyone to work together to do the same. I also want to say that we were joined, to, we were joined today by Erica Bridgeford uh, from Baltimore Ceasefire. And with that, I will turn it over to Director Jackson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll be brief. I'd like to start by first thanking BPD for its tireless investigatory pursuit of identifying a suspect in Dante's murder. Our office appreciates the hard work of the detectives and the officers assigned to the case. Since Dante's murder, our office has provided ongoing therapeutic and mental health supports to our team members. We'll continue to do that in partnership with Dr. Tara Doty of Sage Wellness and other benefits providers. I spent time this morning talking to team members, and the news brings a flurry of emotions for us. You know that feeling when, you know that feeling when you have a scrape on your leg, 
and it's just starting to get that light film of new skin over it and then you fall again and the skin gets ripped off that's the feeling man oh man that's the feeling it's a reminder that there's so much more wound work that needs to be done in Baltimore City communities. What the Safe Streets family feels right now is grateful and relieved and angry and saddened. We also feel determined and we remain dedicated, more dedicated than ever, knowing that Tata walks beside us as an ancestor to honor his life's light to do this work. We understand how transformational this work is and we vow to continue to partner with folks who are at the highest risk of being shot or being a shooter themselves so that they can reach the highest versions of themselves. To show them that they deserve better, that better is within reach and that they don't have to do it by themselves. I'll close by sharing that I blindly choose one of 50 meditation stones almost every day the stone that I drew today, I've only drawn three times since becoming the director of Monsi. The first day on the job, the day that the verdict in the George Floyd murder case was read, and today, the stone says justice. I hope that the universe will deliver it for Tata and his family and our city. Thank you. So good morning, everybody. Like was spoken earlier, we know earlier this year, Dante Barksdale was tragically murdered in the 200 block of Douglas Court. He was known throughout the city and nationally for his dedication uh, for the message of redemption and peace. And uh, it's heartbreaking to everybody who worked alongside of them, as, as Director Jackson just spoke of. Following a lengthy investigation, our detectives today arrested 28-year-old Garrick Powell for the killing of Mr. Barksdale. This invest investigation included numerous interviews with family members and witnesses, examin examinations and physical comparisons of evidence from multiple jurisdictions, and all kinds of footage of, of film and just good old-fashioned uh, detective work. With this information and in collaboration with the state's attorney's office, we were able to attain a arrest warrant for uh, for Mr. Powell. Our Warrant Apprehension Task Force and our partners at the U.S. Marshal's Office were able to effect an arrest today in the 400 block of North Elwood Avenue without incident. Garrett Powell is yet again no stranger to our justice system and we must continue to work even harder to end this ongoing cycle and end the revolving door of repeat offenders that we see uh, in the city and in this country. As Commissioner Harrison mentioned earlier today, I cannot stress enough gratitude to the men and women who worked tirelessly to, to bring this case to conclusion. The homicide detectives uh, would not stop uh, with this case and worked every day uh, to, to bring this case to conclusion. I'd also like to thank the WATF uh, folks who worked tirelessly to bring Mr. Powell into custody and the U.S. Marshal's Office. We look forward to working with the state's attorney's office to bring this uh, state to the or this case to conclusion, and continue to tackle gun violence in the city of Baltimore. Thank you. Uh, and now we'll hear from our deputy health director, Mary Beth Holler. Good morning, and thank you for being here. In 2008, during a time of zero tolerance policing in Baltimore, Dante Barksdale boldly asked city leaders to change their perspective and to, view, and to view violence as a public health crisis. As one of the founding members of the State Streets Initiative, a program that began with Baltimore City Health Department, Mr. Barksdale spent years recruiting and training community mediators to resolve neighborhood disputes before they turned violent. In the earliest days of the programming and facing skepticism from community members and city leaders alike, he relied on his own personal relationships. He established the credibility of the State Streets program and he has saved hundreds of lives in the process. He proved that one person's passion to make a difference can inspire change in the community.
today we are grateful for the Baltimore City Police Department, the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Safety and Engagement, and the public, and all of the agencies involved for all of their work in finding a suspect in the murder of Mr. Barksdale. Mr. Barksdale was the best of us. He worked closely with many members of the Baltimore City Health Department, and his passing has profoundly impacted us all. Thank you. I stand here today, uh, and first I would like to thank the hard work of the men and women of the Baltimore Police Department. Um, it's not always that we get to uh, all collectively come together, uh, particularly in this time of mourning of someone that was so impactful to the city of Baltimore, uh, and really thank them. And I think everybody at, on, under this at this stage today, uh, truly, truly from the bottom of their hearts, thank them because this wasn't an easy case. And they were able to uh, identify and look, at, look out on that very early on. Uh, and for us to be right here today is truly, truly a special moment. It's special uh, because like uh, Director Jackson said, it's about justice. It's about justice to a young man who dedicated his life to the citizens of Baltimore, to creating better trajectories for young folks in the city and not go into the pitfalls that I may have described earlier. This was about a man legacy that will live on. Uh, and that's what we stand here today. So again, from the bottom of my heart, I would like to thank all of the hard work uh, by the men and the women of the Baltimore Police Department uh, for giving us a taste of justice as we go down this path to ensure that the person who senselessly took the life of Dante Tater Barksdale uh, does not come out uh, and able to impact our city uh, even more. So again, thank you to the hard work of the men and women of the Baltimore Police Department. Next up, I would like to see a uh, call on ceasefire uh, director. Co-founder. Co I'm sorry. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Um, so I personally have been crying all morning just after hearing this news. It is the kind of thing um, that you are, there's a relief but also it reminds you that your friend really got killed. Um, and there is no love like Baltimore love. So I'm personally asking Baltimoreans to wrap Tater's family in love, to wrap his loved ones in love, to give love and support to the frontline workers who do this work every single day, because I've been through murder trials with families. And while it is a relief and a sense of justice when somebody goes to trial for murdering your person, it is also a very grueling process to go to court in that, in that situation. And so they're going to need us more than ever. Also, Tata said there is a triumph in every tragedy. And so while this is a tragedy, and there are many people who may be feeling like, like my family, the person who killed my brother was never caught, right? So there are many people like that in Baltimore. So we still have to do something with that pain as well. And so I'm also just sending love and encouragement and uplifting this city right now to use this tragedy and find the triumph in it, find the joy in it. What is your soul calling you to do? If your family didn't get justice in the way that Tata's family is getting right now, what can you do to pour goodness into this city, to pour love into this city so some other family doesn't have to go through what my family goes through, what Tata's family is going through, what your family is going through? Since there is no love like Baltimore love, I'm personally asking, because we know that since we have Tater on the other side, I've been saying since the day I got that phone call, there's no reason why we can't heal this city. Having a strong warrior like Tater on the other side, riding with us, fighting with us. So let's grasp on to that call from our spirits that he is sending from the heavens to heal this city in the way that only Baltimore can. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Uh, questions? Justin? The microphone behind you. Try it now. Uh, a question I think everybody has is, is there a known motive? Uh,
As you know, the arrest was made earlier today. The investigation continues and is ongoing as we speak. The investigation does not end with the arrest today, and it will continue into the prosecution. Uh, you know, we're not ready to speak on that, and you know, I think that's something that will come out it, as, as we move to the court process. Is the motive unknown, or are you not ready to say? We're, we're continuing to work through that process right now. Like I said, the, 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 the investigation is still ongoing. And then uh, was uh, the suspect, uh, Mr. Powell, was he engaged in safe streets? Had he been had conflicts mediated? Was he, are you, are you, are you aware of him? Thanks for your question. Uh, Mr. Powell was not engaged with any of our safe street sites. He was not a participant of any of our, pro of our programs. That, however, does not mean that our frontline workers had not engaged with him directly in resolving any community conflicts or attempting to uh, enroll him as a participant, but he never became one. But are, are you aware of any interaction then? I am what? not okay. aware of any interaction. Thank you. Did Barksdale and Powell have any sort of relationship that you're aware of? None that we are aware of at this time. And can you speak more to the other offenses that Powell has on his record? Good morning, my name is Major Steve Homan. I'm the commander of the homicide section. Uh, so he has a lengthy record, uh, one of which is a, a prior uh, charge of homicide in 2012. So he's no stranger to the BPD. Following up with that question, should Garrick Powell have been on city streets? Where are we falling short on this? Well, you take that one? I'll take that one and, and thank you, Alexa, for that question. I think it's known, I think Justin reported uh, how this, this gentleman had a lengthy record and Alexa, I think this goes to the point of not just city streets, but the streets, period. Uh, this person was interacting with county governments, Anne Arundel, Baltimore County, with guns and other things like that. Uh, this is what we were talking about when we're talking about coordination. This is why I had that meeting with the governor about coordinating uh, our public safety agencies and how we've been working, as you heard from the deputy commissioner around the region. But we have to get everyone at the table to do that because we cannot consistently have folks who clearly uh, should not have been out on the streets, out on the streets anywhere. Whether it's arrest in Baltimore City, Anne Arundel County, Baltimore County, we have to make sure that the systems are talking so that uh, families aren't going through this. The violent assault of a man in Canton captured on surveillance video. Alexa, what can Alexa, police tell us about that we are, case? We, you can ask them about that on the side, but we are going to show some respect to Dante and his family and not ask about questions when we're talking about a murder here. We'll pull you aside. I don't mean any disrespect no, to no, Dante. No, no. I'll make sure that they answer it to you, but we just want to make sure that these, these questions direct right now are about that. I'll make sure that the deputy commissioner answer that question for you before he leaves. Okay, thanks. Earlier, the detective mentioned a lot of steps taken to uh, get the arrest of Powell. I'd like to know what in particular led, it, led to him? What was the big break that you were seeking? So I wouldn't say it was just one thing. Um, it's it, multiple. It's forensic evidence. It's interviews. It's video. And as the deputy mentioned before, good old-fashioned police work. Partnerships with um, the ATF, the FBI, other uh, area agencies uh, really it was not just one thing it was a totality of, of the entire investigation was the video from the area in which he was killed there was video recovered yes um, you guys mentioned the fact that he was taken into custody this morning but can you give us some details about why it took so long there are people in this area who knew where the suspect was i know you guys didn't name the person but is there any concern that people didn't step up if they suspected that he was a suspect so we obtained the arrest warrant for him this week so his capture was was conducted relatively quickly within you know a, a few few days of us getting the arrest warrant um, as we mentioned it was a lengthy investigation and he was developed as a suspect, but we had to build that case along with our partners at the state's attorney's office, you know, to meet that threshold to get an arrest warrant. And I know the, the mayor talked about this, but do we know if he knew Mr. Barksdale, even if Mr. Barksdale didn't know him? I, I would, uh, wouldn't be appropriate to comment on that now in terms of their relationship. Can you answer this? Do you know if it was targeted or random? It does not appear to be a random act. I got one, one more. <laughs> um, 
As far as his, uh, he was on uh, house, uh, home monitoring from a gun charge in Anne Arundel. Was he, uh, had he absconded from that? Did he taken off the ankle monitoring? It, was it difficult to locate him? I, and I, with the understanding that it, you, it did, he did bring him in within a couple of So there days. was some indication that he did remove the monitor at one point. He w did have to go back to court for that, and that was resolved in the other county, but that did not have an impact on our ability to find him. And if I could ask the, the state's attorney, do you think the, the home monitoring program is working generally? We'll, we'll talk about that often. Well, I think, Thank yeah, I, I, because, of, Justin, I don't want to do anything to make this case go the wrong way. I think that it would be inappropriate for the state's attorney to comment at this time at this moment you may be able to do something different with her later on but we don't want to do anything uh to possibly mess up this case well talking about ankle i mean we've had a series of incidents involving people on home monitoring who well yeah i i'll answer it clearly it's not working the way it should be and again uh, justin this is why uh, we need to have all the agencies together and i'm i'm very happy that the governor after our meeting last week is going to bring those folks back so that we can talk about every issue, not in a got you way, but in a way to build accountability and systems so that we are not having these lapses or any of the other lapses that we've seen over and over again in our systems. Thank you, everybody.